that the Edinburgh Festival was born out of the horror of the Second World War. Right. If there hadn't been the Second World War, there would be no festival. Right. And, and, and it's unthinkable of what Scotland could have been without the festival. It, it, I can't imagine it. it. The Edinburgh Festival changed my life completely, 100%. I, I've never believed that Edinburgh, on the shores of this extraordinary estuary, the Firth of Forth, should ignore the, the, the other coastline. Well, c can I just tell you that the first time that I met you, I was invited by a mutual friend to take a video recording of a lecture that you were giving to a class uh, full of school kids. and. I didn't know who you were, but when I, I re-watched the, the tape and, and I, when I got home, it, it changed the course of, of my, my career. I decided I was going to move back to Fife. I grew up here thinking that I was going to find success and, and progress elsewhere and in a far off place. And it was you that showed me that, that there was ample material and inspiration in, in Fife uh, for an artist. And um, I've got to thank you for that. Um, <laughs> So, oh, um, well, can I say I'm so deeply <sighs> touched that I'm here being interviewed by you. But I, actually, can I, can I just say, uh, this year is, the, uh, is, is marked by the fact that it's the 75th anniversary of the festival. Yes. But the festival that I knew, and it, which inspired me, mm. and, and which changed the course of the, the lives of many very, very important artists. doesn't matter who they were. It could be Alec Guinness or uh, Richard Burton or Claire Bloom or T.S. Eliot or <laughs> the world's greatest people, mm. okay? From, they came from all over the world. Uh, and, of course... The first director was to be included amongst them, uh, uh, Rudolf Bing, who was Austrian, Jewish, mm. a victim of, of Hitler. Uh, yeah. I don't recognize the Edinburgh Festival now, as it is, uh, as having anything to do with the original concept. The original concept, according to the first Lord Provost, Sir John Faulkner, was that it was um, all about the flowering of the human spirit. That these were his, his words. Yeah. But more importantly, he also said, the Edinburgh Festival is in no way a commercial venture. Mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is, in every sense, a money-making machine. Yes. Uh, and it produces many millions of... Um, Pounds, uh, which are destined into, for the coffers of Edinburgh City Council. It's not particularly popular with the, the people, the, re the residents of Edinburgh either. No, it's not. Well, it's never been. Uh, actually, it's never taken root in Edinburgh. I, I have never been able to forget the war and the, the, the problem of being an Italo Scot. Uh, not really being part of the, uh, the the real society. I was ostracized. Mm -hmm. I was b brutalized. I had to go to school with police protection. Uh, I was in a ghetto. It was a Roman ca Catholic ghetto. Um, and inside that ghetto was another ghetto, which was the ca Catholic ghetto. Uh, I, I, I was associated w w with uh, the enemy. Right. German, German was a, 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 a swear word. Yes. Uh, um, Bosch, German. Yeah. G Germany. So so was Italy, of all, of all places. Yeah. <coughs> and... Um, I had to use the language of art 
to uh, make sense of my own life, which I did almost instinctively. <clears throat> and I realized I wasn't an artist. I was, in fact, essentially an art teacher, an art master. I think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, ironic you would describe yourself that way because I've seen your paintings in person and they're outstanding. I mean, I, I didn't realise that you were an artist until I came to an exhibition in Craig Crook Castle and I was blown away by the quality of your work and the sensitivity of your draftsmanship. And yet, there you are describing yourself as, as a teacher. Well, can I say, uh, I, I, I was privileged because of the Edinburgh Festival to uh, work with Joseph Boyce. And when I asked him, Joseph, please tell me, what is the essential nature of your art? And of course, he'd survived the war, wearing the wrong uniform, the uniform of uh, the German Luftwaffe. Mm. Um, he said, my art is my teaching. I don't make art. Uh, art is the language I have to use to communicate a certain difficult truths which are basic to being a uh, living life as a proper human being. All human beings, especially when they are at primary levels of education, are artists. Yes. They sing, they dance, they jump, they play games. Uh, you give them a piece of paper and they, 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 they mark it with the drawings, uh, they colour it, they, um, they, they're artists. Yes. And of course, I experienced that as a schoolmaster, as a primary school teacher. And I was determined that when <clears throat> I had to teach the children when they were beyond primary into secondary level, that I would, I would ignore the whole idea of the examination system, that they could not be examined by sitting in uh, a room writing down uh, information mm. which had been drummed into them. Yeah. I, I, I could see that the language I was using was the most important language, and it was not the language used by politicians um, or business people. It was not the language, but it should have been uh, taken seriously by the legal profession, by law. It should have been identified with our ideas of freedom and our ideas of justice and our ideas of civilization. But it wasn't. And gradually, the Edinburgh Festival has become, and everything else to do with the art world, has become uh, absorbed into the world of, dare I say it, entertainment. Sure. I'm, I'm going to read you one of your own quotes, if you don't mind. Um, so... In this article you've written, if our religious faith has been weakened to the point of being hardly discernible, we can take heart in how the human spirit recognises the need to praise and treasure works of art. It is not by accident that as an extension of Notre Dame you enter the Louvre to see the Mona Lisa, and as the extension of the Duomo you enter the Uffizi to see the birth of Venus. Yeah. I, I think that, that really sums up how I've felt about art all my adult life, because I don't go to church, but art is, is a religion for me. I, I see a, an artwork as an altar to the consciousness of, uh, of, of the individual. Can I say, yeah. I'm so glad you're telling me that, because I believe that although you might not have, uh, you might not be a member of a, re a religious, uh, you can't identify yourself with a religious group, I think art, on the highest level of expression, uh, ascends to the condition of prayer. It's, 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 a, it, it's your instinct to show your, 
desire to tell the truth as far as you can, can, can consider it, but also to be grateful, to be alive. It is, it, 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 as far as Joseph Boyce was concerned, he said, my art is my expression of my capacity to love life, to love every aspect of being alive and my fellow human beings and every aspect of, of nature. I, I think there's a problem now. Where do we help artists to, uh, to be revealed in their totality, um, not just associated with a world where everything is commodified. I think art is a gift. When an artist writes a poem, when Seamus Heaney, who was a friend of mine, wrote whatever he wrote, it was a great gift to humanity. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. If I you're writing about a man's a man for all that, uh, you're possessed of the same mindset as Joseph Boyce, who is saying uh, Jimmy Ball is a human being, he's, he's a murderer, but he should be given the chance to use the language of art. He's never had that chance. He's a murderer and he's cut off from society. And, uh, but it wasn't just about Jimmy Ball, it was about the, the experiment mm. uh, in penal reform, which was taking place. I had to identify myself with that. And I, I, was, I was condemned by the Arts Council of Scotland. I'll never forget it. Mm. As bringing dishonour to the meaning of art. <laughs> <laughs> Dishonour to the meaning of uh, the Marco Gallery yeah. and dishonour, uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I couldn't help but laugh as, as I was sitting across the table and then this was going, and then they were saying, you, you don't deserve a penny of public support. <laughs> 